This is Madison Hebbard for CHTV. Today, Remembrance Day 2018, I am travelling with Queensland Pioneer Steam Railway to Bundamba Racecourse Station in Brisbane, Queensland, Australia, to board a heritage troop train hauled by a steam locomotive that operated during the First World War. Travelling the tracks to Swanbank Heritage Train Station, the Queensland Pioneers Steam Railway commemorates 100 years since the announcement of peace and pay respect to the servicemen and women who departed by train and sacrificed their lives during the First World War. Importantly, there are three highly significant dates of peace. The 11th of November 1918, fighting ceased and no more lives were lost thereafter. June 28, 1919, the Treaty of Versailles was officially signed outside of Paris, France, in the Palace of Versailles. The treaty was one of several that officially ended five years of conflict, known as the Great War, World War I. It wasn't until the 10th of January 1920 when the Treaty of Versailles actually came into effect. The Remembrance Weekend includes a rare sight of the transfer of light horse by carriage and their riders as it was 100 years ago. Travel back in time with me by steam train to see the reenactment, memorabilia, heritage machinery and vehicles, wartime entertainment, the Red Cross nurses and the light horse. You're on Remembrance Day, right here with Rob. Now, Rob, can you please tell us a little bit about exactly your title and what you actually do with the trains here at um, the station? So I'm the chairman of the Queensland Pioneer Steam Railway. I also uh, am one of the chief maintainers, and I sort of go around doing a bit of everything around the railway. Mm -hmm. So can you tell me a little bit about this station? How old and what is the, what is the name of the station we're at now? So this is Swanbank Station. It was formerly Forest Hill mm -hmm. uh, on the old Toowoomba line. And the building is uh, 115 years old this year. So wow. just celebrated. So could you tell me, when you say the old Toowoomba line, um, did they use this line during the war at all? Or how, how old is this line? So the station would have been used during the war years. This branch line is the oldest in Queensland having been uh, built in 1887. Um, however, that line didn't carry as many uh, troops as some of the other lines. So in the old days, it would have mainly been the country stations out west. Uh, so anything heading out past Longridge, uh, anything heading out past Toowoomba, they'd pick up from. So, could you tell me in that case, is this one of the lines where a lot of the farming men brought their horses or rode their horses to the station and then put them onto the trains to get to the ships to go to war? Well, it's indicative of it. Uh, we don't know whether it happened on this branch line itself, but on many of the branch lines, many of the uh, soldiers that went off to war and the farmers uh, who brought their horses that would become their steeds in war uh, they would go to the local railway station, ride in there from all the way out of their properties, and then the train would take them the last little bit out to the ships that would send them off to war. Okay, so in saying that, back then, the, tra the train was a, a, one of the main sources of actual transport in Australia. It was pretty much the only source apart from the horse. So uh, in many ways, it was a way of making sure that the uh, 
the horses didn't get too tired. So it would generally take, you know, 600 mile off their run, um, which is a long way on horseback. Mm. And I think the horses appreciated as did the, uh, the soon to be soldiers. Yes, exactly, exactly. It's our homeland, our own land, to cherish for eternity. And we're here at Swanbank train station. Tracy, it's been a great day here today. Can you tell me how did you get involved with the light horse? Uh, we breed Australian whaler horses and it just became something that we realised that a lot of people were after original light horse gear, saddles, bridles, leggings, etc. And we thought, ooh, original horses. So we started uh, riding with the Queensland Mounted Infantry Historical Troop about 10 years ago. And uh, now we ride all of our own whalers that we've either bred or own. Yeah. Now the actual whalers, could you tell me a little bit more about them? Were they the main horse or were there a variety of farming horses that came in across Australia to actually go to war? Nation internationally, the horses from Australia back then were known as whalers because they came from the colony of New South Wales. So they were bought by the Indian Army uh, and they were well sought after horses. They were excellent military horses, uh, they had great feet, they went long distances, they had a little bit of heavy horse mixed in with them, so they were a good all purpose horse and for that reason that made them a good military horse and so yeah they they were just a good all-round animal. Can you tell me out of interest um, they're, they're quite a strong large horse yes a lot of them are they do they have any sort of uh, resilience or a connection with draft horses? They do have heavy horse in them so they've got Clyde style Suffolk punch so they've got some of the heavy Pergeron heavy breeds in them mm -hmm. but they've also got the lighter breeds Timor pony and they actually come in four different types so you've got pony heavy medium light mm -hmm. um, we generally prefer the mediums um, to light. One of the things about whalers is they're not generally known for being particularly tall and one of the, they're, they're a multi-purpose horse so you want to be able to lean off a gate and open and shut the gate. Yeah. Also not all of us are in our 20s anymore so you want to be able to get on and off the horse easily. Yeah. Um, so generally they are around 15 hands uh, and, uh, and they're fairly solid built horses but again you've got the heavy medium and light and the pony so there's a variety in there as well. About how did this idea and this concept come about? Uh, the um, Pioneer Railway had run a troop train before, uh, and uh, the significance of the 100th anniversary became apparent to us. And uh, we thought we would try to run a bigger event. Uh, we applied for a grant to the Anzac Centenary Grants Commission, and we got a grant which enabled us to make it a bigger event uh, and uh, we knew that one of the key things uh, for us was to get try to get the light horse involved and when we got the light horse involved they were very keen to actually see their horses travel on the train which had not happened for many years and that became a real central focus of the project and took a lot of our money and effort uh, to get the uh, to get the cattle wagon organised and certified and then to actually practice getting the horses on and off the cattle wagon. Um, I guess from my point of view as an ex-military person my real interest in this was making sure that it was about remembrance and, and not a, a party. It is, a, it is a, a glad day but it's also about remembering uh, you know those who died trying to protect our freedoms and our and our values uh, and that tied in well with the train we had which had been used to uh, carry troops in the war the light horse and being able to come in and uh, 
do uh, you know do their load and unload, uh, and the notion that we could probably get some military support from Amberley, which uh, we we actually did. So yes, the idea of having a serious memorial sort of took shape, and and it went from there and. Uh, Fortunately, we've had pretty good support for it. You have. I believe that you have highly succeeded and you should be very proud of this um, event. Um, it's truly what I believe you're trying to get across is it's not just about the light horse or the train or those things. It mm. is about the journey that the men had throughout yes, the war. That's right. And then making their way to peace, which mm. is what we're actually commemorating today. The fact yeah. that they, they, they managed to get all that way through that dreadful journey they had to yes. travel yes. in the war every day. Yeah. And then this is what you're commemorating. You know, yes. that's the actual that's right. heart of this commemoration. That's really what it was about. Um, because uh, th this day, Anzac Day and Remembrance Day, should have a, a specific significance for all Australians, and particularly young Australians, I think, for young people to see what happened today, the ceremony mm -hmm. that actually goes around formally remembering those who gave their lives for our freedoms, uh, is important to carry forward, and uh, we hope that that the event today did that. It's a long way to Timberary. It's a long way to go. It's a long way to Timberary. To the sweet 